Good looks is only one objective when doing upgrades or transformations to any kitchen. When designed right, your kitchen should cook well too. We're in the lovely Bosch Premier Kitchen at West Star Kitchen and Bath in Tempe, Arizona. David, what did you make today? And tell us about the dish that you paired with the wine. Well, we started off actually choosing the wine and then we created a dish around it. Now, because we chose this Graziano Zinfandel Mendocino, it's known for its white pepper spice, not just jammy, like, a, like the Zins that we have in our market right now, but that herbaceousness really was dictating an herbaceous meal. All right, so what we have here is a, a meal that goes way back in my family, uh, stuffed tomatoes. And let's talk about how we prepared this. First of all, we took a tomato and we're going to hollow out the inside and then we take the inside of the tomato and we're gonna put it in a separate pot. We're eventually going to add onions, bay leaves, and some parsley and garlic. Then we take the uh, tomatoes and we're going to turn them upside down after we salt the inside because we actually wanna extract some moisture because if it's too moist, it's gonna fall apart when we're done cooking and it's just gonna make the, the inside uh, pro protein a little bit soggy. And then, so I swung by AJ's and I was uh, talking to the butcher. He had uh, breakfast sausage as well as ground veal. So I bought a quarter of a pound of the ground veal, a quarter pound of the breakfast sausage, and then I combined it. But this is a really important ingredient. You need to take the inside of a bread as I've taken this ciabatta roll. I've pulled out all the inside of the bread and I'm gonna soak it in milk. And then we're gonna add that in. It's gonna give it some texture and, and um, kind of uh, fluff up the meat a little bit. Okay, when you were actually making the meat concoction with the bread and the milk and all that and mm -hmm. the egg, it looked like you were making meatloaf. Right. And, and I used to make that all the time. My kids growing up, they absolutely love it. So in that, that same kind of a form and you're stuffing the tomatoes, mm -hmm. Um, if you don't, let's say you don't like tomatoes, could you stuff a green pepper or something? Or is your mother going to be upset with no, me? No, we're just we're <laughs> yes, talking about this. The recipe. You could take any type of vegetable that you can stuff, and imagine if you had like a red or yellow bell pepper. Oh, right, it would right. Great. It would taste great. The uh, sugars of the bell pepper would actually arrive once you've baked it a little bit, so that would be great too. Yeah, just so, just to change it up a little bit, not to, like I said, change the family recipe, but because this looks absolutely fabulous, but I know there are a lot of people out there that don't really like tomatoes. Sure, there's a whole, all sorts of directions you can go, but I am gonna tell you that between the, cho the ground veal and the breakfast sausage, mm -hmm. Where this recipe is coming from is in the southern part of France where my, uh, where my grandparents had lived and it's actually about 10 miles away from Italy and I've been pointing out to my mom that a lot of her recipes that I've been growing up with, they have a little bit of an Italian flair. She goes, but they're French. And I'm like, yeah, but mom, there's something Italian about them. And you can, if you think about it, anywhere in France, whatever borders are near it is going to influence that food. Right. So I think that's where we get the Italian sausage mixed with the ground veal, high uh, protein, low fat, mixed with high fat, and big spice with the, uh, the breakfast sausage. Okay, and so the spice then, if this is a French meal, mm -hmm. or considered a French meal, in my family it is. Okay, <laughs> and, and we're not necessarily putting a French wine with it, mm -hmm. but again, we're not pairing the wine with the food, we're pairing the food That's right. with the wine. Between the, the bay, like I said, the bay leaves, the parsley, the garlic, um, the uh, thyme, herbaceous spices, and a spicy wine, like with like, they're gonna complement each other. Right. And I'm excited to see how that goes together because we've had a chance to sample the wine a little bit because we did it backwards this time and kind of went by the wine and our mood and David's in a very spicy mood today so we started with that. And then he created this meal around the wine and so we're doing it seriously a little bit backwards. So we've tried the wine and now we get to try the food with the wine. But before we go there, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about this beautiful kitchen that we're cooking out of today and the Bosch appliances. Um, I, uh, an interesting little fact about Bosch appliances is that today we're cooking on a five burner, 36 inch, but Bosch, ironically, was the first ever to make a five burner, 30 inch. And uh, there's still some requests for that here and there, although we're, we're getting bigger and we're starting to cook more and need the space, etc. You had the opportunity to cook today for us on the Bosch gas mm -hmm. 36 inch cooktop. Right? I can't live without it now. 
You can't. So no. are you walking home with us today? Uh, I'm going to try to sneak it out the back <laughs> yeah, door if good possible. Luck. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I, once you cook on a stove like that, I, I'm kind of disappointed, but i got to go home to an electric stove. Yeah. So, well. well, and here's the cool thing. You're, you're a sommelier, and so being a wine guy, if you will, you get to work with a lot of chefs in the valley, and I'm sure you've had the opportunity to cook on a multitude of cooking um, ranges, cooktops, induction, etc. Mm -hmm. So what made this, what do you think makes this different than what you're cooking on at home? Uh, it, the way the, the piece is structured, uh, first of all visually, uh, it makes me want to approach mm -hmm. it and then once I start working with it, it was simple and easy, fired up right away and then it cooked very evenly and I can't ask for more than that. Right. And now you get to see what I'm talking about. All right, so let's taste our wine, first of all. Okay. Okay, and can you do me a favor, put your hand over the top of the glass? Oh, all we've right. done this before. Right. This is the hoovering, so okay. the alcohol's rising, right. carrying the aromas up, and just a little room, and you can almost smell that spice. No, I can smell it. Now, when we taste it, pull a little air in through your mouth. It sounds like a slurping sound, but this is, this is the right thing to do. Mmm. I'm not sure I can do that. Don't, don't do it with champagne. <laughs> no, I know. You'll embarrass yourself. And bottle rockets. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you blown okay, up. Okay, so now we taste the spiciness. Once it's finished, it's down our throat, that mm. spiciness and herbaceousness really comes through. Now we're going to taste the food, and that's when this, is, this marriage is going to happen. Again, that looks fabulous. Kudos to your mom. She'd be proud. Mm, I wish you guys could try this right now. And you can, because you can get this recipe right now on our website, but you also teach wine pairing at Teaching Wine Online. Right, so you can go there. You t you, there's a total of six classes as of right now. I'm working on more, but I have a wine and food pairing class that will teach you the basics of how to make wine and food work together. 18 videos, each video is about two and a half minutes. It's the easiest way to learn about wine. There's all sorts of other classes there as well. Thank you, David. And to learn more about teaching wine online, today's recipe and David's wine choice, you can do so by visiting us at finewineanddesign.com. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.